Who is super excited about the readings this morning? <laughs> Yay, divorce, awesome. So I do want to just say very quickly, because I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that reading, that we cannot understand Jesus talking about divorce without understanding how divorce was used in Jesus' day. So there had been a decree that all people who had married across social lines, whether that was Jew and non-Jew, or one had been in exile and somebody who had not been in exile, must be divorced. And children of that divorce must be cast out. So I think it's really important when we read this that Jesus is not talking about divorce as we currently understand it. And that in the, in the marriage ceremony, the first thing it says that marriage is for is mutual joy. So I do believe that marriages can be of God. I believe that some marriages are made not of God. And I do believe that sometimes marriages and covenanted relationships can stop being of God. And in those times, I think God calls us to always be who it is God made us fully to be. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. What Jesus is talking about is this mandated forced decree where women who at that time were property would have been cast out to the edge of society without any support or community. They would have been shunned by their community and they could not return to their family of origin because they would have been shunned there too. So you can imagine the thousands and thousands of divorced women who were cast to the outer margins of their society with their children with no way to take care of them. So that's what Jesus is talking about. Okay? Okay, let's get to the fun kid part, <laughs> which is what I really want to talk about, because anytime there's complicated theology to talk about in church, I always ask the young people to come forward. So we have some young people who I would love to invite to come forward if they felt so comfortable. You can sit on the edge or you can participate from your seat. No shame, no blame. You're going to come up or you're going to participate from there? All right. I, I thought I might be able to count on you to, you can sit right there. Oh, awesome, look at you all. All right, great. So, awesome. <laughs> I always say however you self-identify, so I am glad that you are here. So, I have a question for you all. Oh, you ready for my question? All right, good. How do you know, well, first of all, let me start with, who loves you? Your mom. Good. Your dad? Your grandmother? Your family. Yes. God? Okay. Anybody else? It's okay. Do you know anybody else who loves you? Do you know anybody who loves each other? Do you know, do you know people who love each other? Eliza. Eliza. Sure. Yes, I agree. <laughs> who else? Do you know people who love each other? Do I have to start a couples course here? <laughs> yeah? Mom and dad love each other? Okay, good. Whew. All right. Do you know any other people who love each other? You love each other, sisters? That must be a good day. Okay. Good. So now I have a follow-up question for you. You told me that there are people in your life who love you, and you told me that there are people who, in your life who you know love each other. How do you know that? How do you know? Who said that their mom loved them? How do you know? How do, you, how do you know that your mom loves you? Or your dad, or your grandparents, or your tias, or... They say they love you. Because they say they love you. Do they say that? Yes. Yeah. Is that how you know too? Yeah. Yeah? Who, um, who knows, who said that they saw people who love each other? Who said that their parents... Do any of your parents love each other? 
Please raise your hand. Just raise your hand. <laughs> How do you know that your parents love each other? <laughs> They're honest. Wow. All right. Yeah, things. Good. Okay. Great. Other ways? Do they ever give each other things? Yeah. Yeah. Do they ever do anything for each other? Yes. Yeah? Like what? Sometimes your mom loses things and your dad looks for it. <laughs> That's lovely. Yeah. Mom has a lot on her mind, doesn't she? Yeah. On Mother's Day and Father's Day, they maybe give something to each other, maybe a card, maybe cook a meal. There are ways that people show each other that they love them. Yeah, yeah. I want to tell you about a friend of mine. Hi, Megan. Isn't it great to have Megan here? I want to tell you about a friend of mine. Does anybody know who this is? Does anybody recognize this picture? Adults? Any help? Any help? This is Barbara Harris. Yeah. Her name is on the camp that we go to sometimes, and sometimes uh, young people go to the summer camp. Her name is Barbara Harris. And does anybody know who Barbara Harris was? Oh, sorry, choir. Does anybody know who Barbara Harris was? Why is she wearing those fancy clothes? She was the president. She was the president? <laughs> she would, we would have liked that very much. <laughs> she, yep. She was a priest. Mm -hmm. She was one of the first women priests in the Episcopal Church. Do you know why she's wearing those special clothes? She was a bishop. She was a bishop in the church. Barbara C. Harris was the first... Good morning! <laughs> Barbara Harris was the first woman bishop in the entire Anglican Communion. In the whole church, in the whole world, Barbara Harris was the first woman bishop. And she happened to be... She happened to be from Massachusetts. Right, she was our bishop. But I want to tell you something about Barbara Harris. Is that when she was made bishop, people were not very nice to her. A lot of people were very upset that she was bishop. Some people did not, in the time, did not think that a woman should be bishop at all. Some people didn't think that a person who was black should be bishop at all. Barbara Harris was also divorced, and some people thought that that meant she shouldn't be a bishop. And Barbara Harris never went to seminary. She never had a formal seminary education. And a lot of people in the church thought that that meant she should not be bishop. But she became bishop, didn't she? Why do you think, how do you think Barbara was able to become bishop despite all those people who were not very nice to her? She worked hard. She did work hard. She was kind. She was very kind. Anything else? She was elected. She was elected. Power to the people, Betsy, yes. She was elected. Do you know why? Do you know one song I heard Barbara Harris sing when I knew her? Do you know? She used to love to sing, Jesus Loves Me. That song that we sang at the beginning of church today, Barbara would sing it all the time. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And Barbara knew throughout her whole life that Jesus loved her. And it was because she knew that that she was able to do amazing things even when somebody told her it wasn't possible. When she was threatened and told that if she went ahead and followed God's plan for her life, that there would be trouble, Barbara knew that Jesus loved her. 
And that, knowing that Jesus loved her, kept her going. In the Gospel today, Jesus takes the little children and tells his followers that they, you, the grown-ups in the world, are supposed to act more like you, not the other way around. That the, we're supposed to be curious like you. We're supposed to be honest like you. We're supposed to be open like you. And see, what the adults in the world don't know is that you are closer to understanding Jesus' love for you now than we are. Because sadly, as you get older and you have lots of experiences in life, you go through some things and you meet some people along the way, they're going to tell you that that's not true. They're going to tell you that you're not smart enough or you're not fast enough, or you're not tall enough, or you're not pretty enough, or you're not wise enough. There are going to be lots of people in the world who try to get in the way with what God is about in your lives. When you have trouble at school, or when you have a bad day, who do you talk to about that? God? Mom. Yeah, Mom. Madeline, your sister, you talk to the people who you know love you because you can trust them that they're going to take care of you and that because they love you, you can trust them with that and they're never going to leave you alone to face those things on your own. And I really, really want you to know that God loves you. And we say that a lot at church. We have a banner that says, God loves you, no exceptions. But I think sometimes when you talk to the grown-ups in the world, we think that's some abstract idea up there, that God loves us sort of generally, as an idea. God loves people. But that's not what Jesus teaches us. What Jesus teaches us is that God loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you and you, and you, and you, and me. As individuals, Jesus loves us. And I really want you to know that because if you ever have a hard day, or a sad day, or if somebody ever says something to you that hurts your heart, I want you to know that Jesus loves you more than anything else in the world. And I want you to lean on that in those hard days and be reminded of how much Jesus loves you. So somebody said God loves you. How do you know that God loves you? Grown-ups, how do you know God loves you? You feel it? How? Through people? Because you couldn't come this far by yourself. God showed up. Like people who love us show up. How do other people know that God loves them? Ever see a sunrise? God loves you. Right? Ever have a friend call you to ask you how you're doing? Jesus loves you. Right? I want all of us in this world that sometimes can be a rough place to hang out. I want all of us every day every day to hear a message that God loves us, to give us strength for the journey. I want you to be able to picture Jesus saying, you are loved. If only there was an image I could use of Jesus showing you, you are, hang on a second. <laughs> My goodness. What is this? You think? What do you, th what do you think it's a poster of? Who do you think's on it? Jesus? Who's that? Anybody know who that guy is? That's Jesus. Can anybody, is anybody old enough to read those words on the bottom? Yeah? You want to give it a shot? You are loved. So, 
in the readings today and in the world, there are going to be times where I want you to remember that this is always true, no matter what your day looks like. That every day you could imagine Jesus looking at you and saying, I love you, and I'm here with you, and I'm never going to leave you alone. Okay? Would you like something to help you to remember that? I just might have something. <laughs> Is it stickers, they say? <laughs> Would I do a children's service without stickers to hand out? <clears throat> That's for you. Jesus loves 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 you. And Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Amen.